VIP fam, what's good? It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com, on Machine 2.1. Just going to go over some of the updates and features with you guys. Now, I have Machine open as a virtual instrument inside of Ableton Live 9 right now, but it's not going to stop me from showing you some of the features. Okay, so for example, File, Preferences. You immediately notice under the General tab, under your metronome box, you have an auto enable when recording feature now. So when you press the record button on your hardware controller, you can turn your metronome on and off with no problems. That's a lot easier. That's a big workflow enhancement. I know a lot of producers are probably beckoning for. Under your input, your quantize, you can select none, record, or play and record. I select record because when I'm in my session, when I turn my metronome off, I want to make sure that I don't keep hearing that during my uh, my session when I'm playing back my audio. You know, some people like to play during a session. I'm one of the people who don't. So, for example, let's go to our transport control. Now, here's the session playing. Now, if I press record on my hardware controller, that's on and that's off. Now, you also can do this from the software as well. Okay, so that's a nice touch, you know, so if you want to hold on a record button from that point, you know, you can also enter what's called your quick record mode and you can set up your pattern lengths as well as your bars. Okay, so let me unsolo that group right quick. So here I have a track that I was just messing around with. And another great feature about the 2.1 software is that when it comes to your sounds, okay, like here, here's all my sounds. Now you immediately notice how the levels and the pans appeared when I hovered over that. So this makes a lot of sense because if you have some sounds that are actually, you know, kind of lengthy in name, you know, it can get kind of crowded or it can make finding those particular sounds, you know, kind of troublesome and clumbersome. So I think it's kind of neat that when I'm not over there, I can, you know, easily view, you know, the sounds down here in the pattern arranger. So that just by, you know, moving back and forth like this here. You know, you can turn it on or off. Activating with the hover feature. I mean, whatever you want to call that, that's how that works. Now over here under the gear icon, we added this new MIDI uh, scene change feature on here also. So these are these are two completely different um, beasts in, the, in themselves. This one uh, is more for live performance. But if you want to do a live performance from your uh, your MIDI controller, you also can set that up as well. Because let's say, for example, MIDI note and on your hardware controller, you press shift and MIDI. OK, basically what happens is. See, I'm going through those scenes like that. Now, you also have your program change here. Now, if you remember down here. Before we had to, you know, if you want to do a program change, you, you know, you would paint it in, you know, effects and things of that nature. So I think it's kind of cool that we have it right here. Now, the source is not showing up here. Why? Because I have my machine opened up as a virtual instrument inside my DEW, which is Ableton Live 9 right now. Now, there's also another option here. Uh, it says source. So if you want to select your MIDI device, you know, whether the MK1, MK2, Machine Studio, you know, whatever you have those will show up in another drop down menu it'll be like it'll be like source and then there'll be um you know where you can select your midi devices from there because basically what happens is the midi information it gets sent to machine to trigger uh the scenes uh chromatically you know using the uh, the cc mapping so that's how that works other great features i'm probably not going to get into in this video i'll probably get into the next video for example if i was to right click here um, we have the group MIDI bat setup. Now, if you're thinking that you're going down here and you're right clicking looking for that, it doesn't show up down here. You have to, you know, go in your group. That's why they call it the group MIDI bat setup, which makes a lot of sense because when you're doing your sounds to MIDI channels or sounds to MIDI notes, nine times out of ten sounds to MIDI notes is going to be for instruments. Okay, uh, MIDI channels be more. Well, in my opinion, anyway, for 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 drum sounds, you know, if I wanted to go on my drum group here and go sounds to MIDI notes, I can drag uh, 
my MIDI pattern here, it'll be in a big hodgepodge like this, which is cool. Um, but me as a producer, I like to get a little more control over my drums. So for me, if I'm dragging and dropping my drum sounds, I'm going to sounds to MIDI channels. If I'm on an instrument such as Massive here, you know, I would go sounds to MIDI notes is how I would do that. And I would grab this MIDI pattern and drag it over. But we're going to get into that in the next video. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some more of the new features on the Machine 2.1 uh, software. Okay, so let's take a look at some plugins here. Now here I have Massive. Let's pull it up like this. Now I have this group muted uh, in this particular situation and I'll explain to you in the next video why I have it like that. Okay, so you see right here you have this little pen feature. Okay, that's on and that's off. Now this is major because I don't know about you, but I would get driven crazy when if I had a plugin open, you know, like Massive or you know, you know whatever case may be or if I'm doing some mastering in machine with my Waze plugins or whatever, and then you go over and you touch another group, it will collapse the window. Now we don't have to worry about that no more. Nice. Go over to my mixer, open in my window, collapse my windows, whatever the case may be, my plugins stay open. Major, badly needed. I am so glad <laughs> that they added that feature on there. Another great workflow improvement is you can uh, actually erase your patterns in real time by holding erase plus the group that you're in, which gives you a, a fast workflow. So for example, let me make sure this massive plugin is muted. Okay, so let's say if I was in, you know, the mix, here's a little, a little beat I was making. Uh, that's from my Dirty Drums uh, drum kit. You guys can head over to the site and download the demo and get these, uh, these sounds as well as that loop. Dope drum kit, man. If you like the kit, you know, come by the site and uh, pick up the kit. But if you hold down the erase button plus the group that you're in on your hardware controller, you can erase, you know, your MIDI notes in here. So that's a nice touch. Another nice touch is if you press, let's say like the navigate button on the MK1 or the MK2, you can notice that you have the browser, the modulation, and the mixer screen. Now being that I have machine opened up as a VST or a virtual instrument inside my DAW of choice right now, the mixer button is not going to work, but for you it will. You know, so if you hit the mixer button, it's going to bring you to the mixer screen, but if the modulation, see how I can open and close that? Okay, I'm opening and closing that modulation, you know, automation lane down there. Now, if I click the browser button, okay, my browser window opens up. Okay. Now, speaking of this browser um, window here, another great feature about the 2.1 software is, you know how, like, when you're um, browsing through your sounds, let's say, um, for example, if you're going through your sounds one by one, like this here. And I'm gonna kill that for a second. I think it's kind of cool that with the new software, or rather the new update, if you hold down the shift button and turn that knob, you can uh, browse through the sounds uh, in increments of 20, such as. Now, if you notice that, that was jumping uh, through the sounds a lot faster than just going like this here, one by one. You know, so that's a nice touch uh, as well. And again, you can open and close your browser uh, from the software, you know, and, you know, that just makes the workflow a lot easier, in my opinion. You know, so far with the 2.1 software, um, I meant to put this video out longer or rather a long time ago, but I was out of the country. I was actually in Japan. And when it came out, I was like, man, I just happened to be out of the country. And I was like, man, I couldn't wait to get back so I can make a video on it to, um, Hit, hit you guys with it. So I apologize for the uh, delay on that, guys. Um, let's get into some more features. You can also press, let's say, on your hardware controller, uh, if you're an MK1, MK2, press Shift plus Sampling, and that will allow you to uh, view your mixer levels 
as well as your pans. And just a quick note, you know, if you are sampling internally uh, from an internal source, say like from another group or the case may be, you also can press, you know, the shift key and you can view your recording history and find your recording takes uh, on your pads. So for example, let's say if I was on the sample screen like this guys, okay. And let's say if I want to select internal and I'm gonna go to detect mode like so. So let's say I want to sample from, let's say group A. And what I'll do is I'll press start to start recording and it will wait for the levels to come in and start recording. So I'm gonna grab a blank sound here I'm going to use sound nine because you don't want to use um, one of your sounds that you have in here unless you want it to replace it because what happened is it'll be a headache and you'll erase your sound and you know that'll be clumbersome so I'm going to select sound nine I'm going to press start and I'll just press stop you notice how it assigns this funny little number here and there's our take so what happens is if you press shift from this point and then recording history, that's when it's gonna let me, uh, do it like this here. It shows up on your hardware controller. That uh, take shows up on your pad. So that's how you find your recording takes uh, down there. So if that was messing with your workflow, that's how you can find uh, those recording takes just by pressing shift and recording history. All right, so that's a nice workflow in itself. So let's go ahead and jump over here and take a look at the drum synth. And I selected bowl dry and uh, shaker big. Let's collapse this window a little bit and let's take a look all right so you have your decay here and you know you can get in here and you know adjust the decay a little bit I'm holding my mic so I'm going back and forth so you know, adjust the amount the grind and you know the impact you know you also can do it from the hardware controllers I'm doing here you know basically whatever you want to do as far as your tuning you know adjusting basically whatever it is you need to do here's a gate you know when you want to cut off that that sound real fast you got that and we have the shaker here and let's go to machine mode right quick where you can adjust your attack uh to me personally a long attack to me sounds better you know not too bad here's your release you know so you can get in there and fine tune you know your sound design to however that you want it you have a grain and but what's really interesting about this is you can go over here to performer and you can hold down your pad like this here. So that's kind of cool. You can get in there and conform it to your session, eighth notes, for example. You know, and just tweak out whatever it is that you want to tweak out. You know, do you have other modes here such as realistic? You know, and you can adjust your attack, release, and you know, all that good stuff. All right. And just as a quick reminder, don't forget you have the uh, the new plugin pen feature. Let's go over that one, one more time. So here's your, uh, your pen feature here. You can click on that. And no matter what you're doing, you can go ahead and leave your plugin windows open. And as another reminder, when you're browsing sounds, you can hold the shift key and turn that knob. You can go through increments a lot faster when you're browsing um yeah man that's pretty much it for the basics of it anyway so now let's go ahead and get into some more advanced routing of MIDI and audio yeah why not let's do that uh, what I'll do is I'll make this a two-part video so click part two in the video and let's get into some advanced dragging and dropping of the audio in MIDI so you guys can get an understanding of that